Now, you know this. This, to me, is no great loss. I don't want to see anybody lose money. But here's the thing. I have been consistent from the days of the first springtime football league, of which I was asked to be a big part of and refused. I love football. Anybody who knows me knows I love football. But I love everything in its season. And I've never, ever been a proponent in any way or an ambassador for or a spokesman for or a participant in springtime football. I detest it. I have never believed it would work. And the fact that it was the first victim of this pandemic, I'm sorry to say that, but it never had a chance. No matter what it said, it never had a chance. No matter what it told you it had in the bank, it never had a chance. No matter what it had as a game plan, it never had a chance. Football is a endeavor for the fall. It is perfect where it is and when it is. And it should be left alone. And unfortunately, unfortunately, like I said, don't want to see anything be the victim of the pandemic, but it, it wasn't going to take much to crush a league which really had not a lot going for it because there's no plan. There's no springtime football plan that will work. Goodell will relay draft picks from his basement. Now, if that isn't, if that isn't, emblematic of the times that is it to relay draft picks from his basement now we broadcast and have for years now every day from my basement um when we started the app with caa when we went back to the fan when uh we eventually made a deal with uh intercom what we do now, we do it from my studio that we built in the house a couple of years ago. So we were just a little ahead of the time. So uh, that has worked very comfortably. Most of the newscasters, most of the people you see doing shows now, they might put fake, you know, they might put fake uh, backdrops, and they might make them. They might make them look like. Uh, sorry about that. They might make them look like. They're at 30 Rock or in the middle of New York City or whatever, but or they might do the classic bookcase and a bunch of trophies that everybody puts behind them and maybe throw in a picture of their kid. Okay? We use our classic backdrop that we've always used, and we don't, you know, bore you with any trophies or anything, you know, or any uh, plaques or anything like that. You know what? Not necessary. But, I mean, it's almost, it's funny to watch, isn't it, when you see somebody and they're, now you're so used to seeing so many of them, and a lot of them are using fake drops behind them. But uh, all you saw was the classic bookcase and whatever trophy they could grab. And then if they wrote a book, that book was always first. You know, so it, it's almost like they came with a little catalog of how to do it. But you've now seen people do programs from, their homes from remote areas, from everywhere. And now in this staying with the times, there's the commissioner. Here's one thing you know about Goodell. He's not going to get booed in his basement. I mean, he probably will feel out of place. Matter of fact, they should maybe hire 100 people to go to his basement and boo him. Because he, there is nobody in America who is better at getting booed or ignoring being booed more than the commissioner of the NFL. It's amazing. You watch him pick after pick, or whenever he is in public, he gets booed unmercifully. And I mean, not just booed, I mean booed out of the house. And he never lets it bother him. I mean, you got to give him credit for that. That's not an easy thing to do. I mean, he'll go there and they'll be screaming. Boy, you can hear it for you. You, know, you can hear it 10 blocks away, and he never bats an eyelash. And just goes about his business. And now, I understand what you're saying. Hey, if I was making 40 million bucks, I'd do the same thing. Well, maybe. But he's got a little bit of a hard bark on him. He does. 
you know, he's a guy that's, he's not afraid. Whether you like him or don't like him, and I don't particularly, you know, like his antics. I used to get along with him a lot better. See, one thing you do is you criticize him, you can't talk to him, he won't talk to you. So if you ever knock him, he won't, he'll never, he'll never do anything. He only does what he knows he's got a, he only interviews he does is when he's got a soft landing. He doesn't do any interviews. But as far as him showing up and doing stuff, hey, you know, he does his job. Now, he could mess up anything. He's not, he has no touch when it comes to public relations, uh, which is why he's so unpopular with the fan base. But you know what? He makes the league money, which is why he's there, and which is why they're paying him $40 million bucks. And this year he'll have the draft. Now he won't be hugging everybody. There'll be no hugs either. There's no booze and no hugs. No hugs this year. So I guess you know, you'll have to see. Maybe somebody will, somebody will be inventive on one of the social medias or one of the applications somewhere, either on YouTube or on Twitter or somewhere, someone will figure out a way for them to all have their classic hug, you know, because the hug has become the suit, you know, the suit that you just got, and whether it's a statement suit or a little more conventional suit or whatever, the suit, usually a three-piece. And guys who don't wear a lot of suits wear three-piece suits. They go get three-piece suits. Somebody talks them into them. Never get talked into a three-piece suit. Never. Conventional suit. No three-piece suit. Okay? No, it doesn't work. It does not work. Just a regular suit. Right? And keep it traditional. You know, just, you know. As Chuck Daly, the late Chuck Daly once said, everybody looks good in a blue suit and a tuxedo. So just remember that. When in doubt, blue suit. Can't miss. Blue suit, tuxedo, nobody looks bad. I don't care if you're the worst-looking guy in the world. You will look good in a blue suit or a tuxedo. You can't miss. Cannot miss. So you don't need all these crazy suits and all this crazy stuff. So you can do away with the suits since the players don't have to go, and no hugs. But we will have the draft coming up a week from Thursday, and you get a lot of, you know, the, 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 the general managers wanted to cancel it. They're like, we don't have the ability to make the trades. We don't have the IT, we get, which means, you know, the technical stuff. We don't have all that ready to go. We won't have the, hey, this will be a little more old-fashioned. Like when, you know, they used to take the players out of the street in Smith Magazine. Well, they didn't really, but that's what they got accused of doing. But it's a little more traditional where they're not going to have poked and prodded and spent as much time with the players as in the past. They still were allowed to Zoom and have these, uh, you know, these virtual meetings. They were allowed to have those. They were all mandated by the league, but you were allowed to have those with the players. So that went on. And, you know, you're trying to see, you're starting, you get a lot of tour rumors. Burrow's going one. Chase Young's going two. I'll be stunned if he doesn't. I don't think Rivera's taking anybody except him. Then it'll get fun. And I think the most likely thing is the Dolphins, who have the picks to do it, trade up from five to three to ensure they get Tua. And then we're off and running from there. The Giants will be able to take a... They'll take, an, uh, they'll take a tackle. I hope they don't screw it up. Or they'll take a really good defensive player. They'll have both available to them. So they really can't mess up at four. Because most likely they're going to be looking at three picks off the board, two quarterbacks, and young. And then they have their pick of things. They're not going to pick the corner, so they're going to pick Simmons or they're going to pick an offensive tackle. I don't think they'll pick the defensive lineman from Auburn. I doubt it. I don't think they will. If I had a guess, I'd guess they'll pick the tackle, but... That's giving him too much credit. Because I, I, I think he's, I think he, other than Tua, I think he might be the best player in the draft. The tackle from Iowa. So um, he's got everything you want in a tackle. He could be around and be a fixture for 10 years for somebody. He's that good. And he's a little nasty and he's, you know, athletic and physical and he was a wrestler and the whole shebang. And I, I think he could be really good. That would be the best pick. Let's see what they wind up doing. 
But it's going to be interesting to do. It's going to be interesting to watch. And it's going to give us a little bit of a diversion. And for once, we don't care how long it takes between picks. We've got nowhere to go. So if they want to take a five-hour first round, you know, be our guest. What do we care? What do we got going on? Now, if it's a... Now, if it's a, you know, the old days, hey, time is of the essence. Right now, it's not. 